Full Metal Alchemist. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie is based in a fictional town of Rizembul, where people practice a rare form of art known as alchemy. Using this art, one can mold common metals like iron and cobalt into precious ones like gold. There are also people who use this art for transmutation, that is, to resurrect dead humans. However, it is not safe at all. Rumors say that if the procedure goes south, there are grave consequences. I heard one guy even lost his dick one time. In the first scene, we are introduced to the Elric brothers, Edward and Alfred. Alphonse, who have been self-learning alchemy from a young age. They mostly use books from their library to carry out their experiments. One day, they prepare a toy and happily show it to their mother, who congratulates them with a warm hug. However, after they leave to play, she unexpectedly passes away due to a cardiac arrest. The boys now have no one to look after them and their days start turning into desperation. So, not willing to give up on their mother, Edward comes up with an idea. He mentions that, using the alchemy book, they can practice transmutation mutation on their deceased mother and bring her back. Alphonse, who has heard rumors about the scary consequences, thinks that it is a bad idea. But when Edward reassures him that there is nothing to worry about, he agrees to help. In the next scene, the two brothers start their preparations. They gather all the ingredients as per the book and place them at the center of the transmutation circle. As soon as they begin chanting the ritual, a dangerously large amount of energy starts forming around the house, which eventually turns into a vortex. At this point, the brothers finally realize that their experiment has gone awry, but it is too late. The vortex ultimately rips their house off and destroys everything in sight, even their dicks. Maybe. The movie then fast forwards by 20 years. An all grown up Edward is chasing after a priest with a mysterious red stone. It is revealed that the magical rock is capable of performing alchemy without the help of any ingredients. Hence, when the priest is cornered, he uses the stone to unleash stone pillars, forcing Edward to retreat. Following this, he summons several terrifying monsters from the underworld, and Edward also conjures up his magic spear, revealing that he has become a master alchemist. Right then, a giant armored figure appears and starts beating up the monsters one by one. He uses his immense strength and throws them around like rag dolls, but in the process, his helmet gets knocked off. Surprisingly, the armor has no head and his body is completely hollow from the inside. Meanwhile, Edward finishes off the rest of the monsters and reveals that he too has prosthetic limbs. He then mentions that because of this trait in his body, everyone calls him the Full Metal Alchemist. The terrified priest tries running away from there, but Edward Edward eventually catches up to him. He then strikes the priest with his prosthetic arm, causing the latter's red stone to get knocked off. Just when it appears as if he has completed his mission, the military, led by Colonel Mustang, arrives and apprehends both of them. Edward begs for the rock, which he calls the Philosopher's Stone, but Colonel Mustang quickly showcases that it is a fake. This devastates Edward, as he has been looking for the real one for years. Meanwhile, the armor also arrives and reveals that he is none other than Edward's younger brother, Alphonse. He did lose his dick. He tries to comfort Edward, but due to the distraction, the priest manages to get away. Later, everyone heads to the military base where Colonel Mustang argues that there is no such thing as a philosopher's stone. You gotta stop talking about that Harry Potter shit. The one that they encountered earlier was simply an amplifier, which has no transmutation ability at all. However, Edward is still hopeful that the real stone is out there somewhere. He is desperately looking for it so that he can regenerate his brother and also his lost limbs. After the meeting, as Edward is preparing to head home, he meets his childhood best friend, Winry. She mentions that she learned about him through the news and now wants to help him in his mission of finding the Philosopher's Stone. Elsewhere, the priest reaches a dark room where a trio of magical gangsters are waiting for them. Led by the ferocious leader, Lust, the group has two other members, Envy, a tall being who can transform into anyone, and Gluttony, a fat human who has the ability to devour anything. It turns out that the priest was sent on an errand, but since he couldn't get the job done, Lust is furious. Hence, as a punishment, she extends her claws and impales him brutally. Once the priest is dead, Gluttony swoops in and eats him. Meanwhile, Edward is trying to get some sleep, but he keeps on having visions about the incident from 20 years ago. Right after the failed transmutation process, Edward is brought to the Gate of Truth, where all knowledge of the universe lies within. Then, the gate suddenly opens opens, and he is sucked inside by some creepy tentacles. Oh, Japan. Edward is sent flying through the universe, and at one point, he sees his mother in the distance. He desperately tries to reach out to her, but the next second, he is again brought outside the gate. 
However, now Edward has vast knowledge of alchemy and how to use it without the books. Right then, a transparent deity appears and introduces himself as God. Oh, he says that if anyone wants to bring their loved ones back from the dead, they will have to make a deal. Saying this, he takes one of Edward's limbs away, as the latter had tried to bring his mother back. Later, Edward wakes up in his house, which is revealed to be still intact. However, his limb is missing, and even his brother Alphonse is nowhere to be found. This makes him realize that even Alphonse sacrificed himself for the alchemy. Edward then tries to go near the place where they had conducted the experiment, and notices a monstrosity of a human, which resembles resembles nothing close to their mother. Enraged, he knocks over an armor set and starts transmuting to bring his brother back. The plan works, and he is again brought outside the Gate of Truth, where the deity is waiting for him. However, since he has requested for his brother's life, he has to again sacrifice one of his limbs. Following this, he wakes up in his bed with two of his limbs missing. His brother Alphonse has also been brought back to life, but only in the form of armor. Back in the present, Colonel Mustang takes the brothers and Winry to an experienced alchemist named Tucker, hoping that he has some information on the Philosopher's Stone. Once they arrive at his mansion, Tucker shows them his inventions. He has created some hybrid organisms by fusing different animals with one another. He then reveals that some years ago, he was a prominent state alchemist working for the government. But unfortunately, all his experiments were deemed useless and so he was kicked out. Now, he is trying his best to come up with different inventions so that he can be reinstated back to his position. Somehow, I don't think inventing cat dog is going to do that for him. In the next scene, Tucker and Edward have a private meeting, where the latter reveals his entire story and why he is after the precious stone. Tucker mentions that while he doesn't know its exact location, he will definitely help in retrieving it. Following this, Edward and Winry board a train to another city. They are attempting to meet Dr. Marco, another scientist who apparently knows about the Philosopher's Stone. Unfortunately, their first meeting is very hostile, as as Marco mistakes them for bad guys and points a gun at them. In response, Edward tries to calm him down, but ends up knocking him out. When Marco regains consciousness, he refuses to talk about the Philosopher's Stone, saying it's for their own good. Just then, he notices something wrong and shoots at the window. It turns out that the deadly woman, Lust, was spying on them all along. She slowly approaches the trio, and despite getting shot multiple times in the chest, does not stop. At last, she pins everyone to the wall, using her extended claws, and then fatally stabs Marco. Whoops, thought he was wearing plot armor like you guys. Once she leaves, Marco, using his last breaths, tells Edward that the truth about the stone's origins can be found in Laboratory 5. This is apparently a secret building that is being used by the military. Edward tries to find out more about it, but sadly, Marco passes away. After the incident, Edward rushes back to Tucker's mansion, only to find that he has created a unique creature that looks like a blend of a human and a dog. Tucker then reveals that he actually sacrificed his daughter and pet dog for the sake of his experiment. Furthermore, the previous creature was made from his wife's body parts. Hearing this, Edward gets enraged and starts beating Tucker up. He almost kills the mad scientist, but fortunately, Alphonse arrives in the nick of time and stops him. After Tucker is apprehended, Edward starts going through several books in hopes of finding out about Laboratory 5. However, even after weeks of research, he doesn't get a single clue. But one evening, as he is still in the library, the military general arrives there and reveals that Laboratory 5 is actually the nickname given to the military cannery that is no longer operational. Hearing this, Edward immediately summons his team and rushes there. Meanwhile, one of the senior captains of the military does additional research on Lab 5 and finds out that it is actually a large transmutation circle. Apparently, something is being created there. He tries to inform his superiors about it, but unfortunately, Lust stops him from doing so. Somehow, the captain rushes out of the house and enters a payphone to call his general, but Envy takes up the form of Colonel Mustang and kills him. The plan is to frame the colonel and put him behind bars for a long time. Unfortunately, the plan works, as a few bystanders witness the incident and immediately report it to the authorities. Elsewhere, the mad scientist Tucker also escapes from from captivity. In the next scene, Edward and his friends are apprehended by the military, on grounds of being associated with the murderer, Mustang. They are then locked inside a room, but Edward, using his quick thinking, quickly frees the group and helps them escape. Following this, they steal a vehicle and arrive at Laboratory 5 premises, where Colonel Mustang is in a standoff with another lieutenant. To everyone's surprise, he snaps his fingers and lights the lieutenant on fire. Just as it seems that Colonel Mustang has gone insane, the burning lieutenant suddenly transforms 
transforms herself. It turns out it was Envy in disguise. Soon, the rest of the bad guys arrive, and Lust stabs Colonel Mustang in the abdomen, injuring him severely. Then, she flees the scene, with Edward following her closely. Soon after, Edward arrives at an abandoned room where a large transmutation circle is drawn. Before he can even make sense of the situation, the mad scientist Tucker shows up. He brings out a philosopher's stone from his pocket and reveals that these things are actually mass-produced inside his facility. In fact, it is the military that is carrying out the operation. Tucker then reveals that in order to bring back someone from the dead, a sacrifice is compulsory. So, the high-ranking military members were bringing back their loved ones at the expense of prisoners. Hearing this, Edward is taken aback and disgusted, but before he can inquire more, Lust arrives in the room and kills Tucker for revealing too much information. Here, we get to know that Lust is a homunculus, a rare but powerful breed that is artificially created using alchemy, kind of like Moist Critical. Just then, the general, who is the mastermind behind all of this, also arrives. He explains that he did all of this to create an army of supernatural beings, and that Lust is one of his best warriors. He then turns on the power inside the room, revealing thousands of lifeless creatures inside their pods. After this, the general injects the Philosopher's Stone into a large tank cylinder, and when the solution enters the creature's body, they start coming to life one by one. The general is excited to see his babies finally take their first steps and goes to greet them, but to his dismay, they immediately corner him and start tearing him up. At the same time, the Colonel, Alphonse, Winry, and the other generals also arrive at the room and team up with Edward to take down the monsters. At first, they are easily outnumbered, and it appears as if they are going to be killed. But then, Colonel Mustang figures out that in order to finish off the creatures, they have to strike their heads. Using this technique, the group eventually starts making some kills. However, the creatures just keep on coming, so Edward and his team are forced outside. There, the battle continues, as Lust and her goons also show up. Colonel Mustang, who is still reeling from the earlier injury, somehow manages to conjure up all of his strength and unleash a deadly flame, which burns Envy and eventually kills him. After this, the Colonel turns his attention to Lust, but all of his attacks are futile. She keeps regenerating her body, even after being critically impaled through the chest. As Edward and the Colonel look on in astonishment, Lust reveals that she has a Philosopher's Stone embedded within her chest. This is why she has incredible strength and he healing abilities. Unfortunately for her, she reveals the exact thing that she shouldn't have. Edward Alphonse and the Colonel gang up on her and unleash several attacks, and when she is distracted, the Colonel rips out the stone from her chest, killing her instantly. Meanwhile, Gluttony watches all this go down from a distance, realizing that his comrades have been killed. He <laughs> swallows his pride and sneaks out of the place quietly, unwilling to risk his own life. After the battle is finally won, Colonel Mustang hands over the Philosopher's Stone to Edward, saying, he can use it to bring his brother back. The latter obliges and starts his alchemy, and the next second, he is brought next to the Gate of Truth. His brother Alphonse is also there in his true human form. Now, all Edward has to do is hand over the stone to the deity in exchange for his brother. However, at the last moment, he backs out. Edward no longer wants to use the evil stone for personal benefit, as he has now seen how it can destroy lives. In the final scene, Edward returns back to reality and apologizes to his brother for not bringing his body back. To his surprise, Alphonse immediately forgives him, saying he doesn't want to use alchemy either. That's okay, brother. I didn't miss my dick anyway. He reasons that the forbidden technique put them in this state in the first place, and it's best to refrain from the stone forever. The movie ends as the two brothers, Winry and the Colonel, stare at the sun, which is stupid, delighted that they have rescued Earth. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.